it's not often that after having worked for about 19 years, you still get to learn so much, uh, you know, in any job, honestly. Unless you take the entrepreneurial pr plunge, etc., then you're you, then you're in a different space altogether. But in the banking space, it is not easy to be, you know, to get the opportunity to continue to learn. So that's really helped. If you take nothing away from my session, maybe just remember this. The one thing that's helped me maybe the most in all of that and navigating these last you know, 20 odd years is how well you network. That is something that I would encourage all of us to do actively, whether you are starting off in your career or whether you're 15 years into your career, 20 years in your career. Just go crazy on networking, right? That was one massive mistake I made. I did not manage money well. So all of you, if you don't have it already, have your Excel sheets, plan your finances, plan your investments. Do not let money lying around in your savings account. Either spend it or invest it. You must be thinking another pre-roll? Wait, let me just skip it. With all theory, there are some boring things which you can avoid. Like the long wait for promotions or increments or the numerous interviews before you land your dream job. At all Tuny, we make sure that you're future ready and skilled to be in the top 0.5% class. Click on the link in the description now. I'll find it hard to pick on industries which are as exciting as payments is right now. Um, it is changing literally by the day. Um, some of it is driven by customer needs, customer asks, tons of innovation happening in the fintech space uh, in payments. Some of it is driven by the regulator. Uh, the RBI is, you know, makes cha wholesale changes these days on, you know, on regulations and then the entire payments ecosystem has to adjust and make sure they are compliant with those regulations. So there's a, there's a whole host of um, things happening in the payment space that makes this uh, job that much more exciting. I just realized how hard it is to pay as a company. We had to make a payment abroad and we are obviously lucky in India to have UPI. The GDP of the country has probably gone up because of UPI because now so many more people can transact. Just being able to allow two people to exchange money just opens up so many opportunities. And I think it's safe to say that we are at a stage where India probably now has one of the best payments and settlement system in the world, right? And that's saying a lot, right? But UPI is, is an excellent example of that. Uh, fantastic system, real-time, uh, you know, domestic payments. Cross-border, as you correctly said, still has a long way to go. Uh, but to your point, if you look at the payments landscape that was there maybe, maybe just as recent as 10, 12, 15 years ago, it was all cash, checks, etc. right? There's been a seismic shift in the way payments get made both on the retail, so the way you and I exchange payments through UPI and the like, but also on the corporate payment space, right? The, there's cash has completely gone out of the ecosystem, not completely, but majority of the cash has gone out of the ecosystem um, because of, one, because of, yes, sure, demonetization and the like, but because of how easy digital payments uh, now are, uh, compared to you know where they were about 10 or 15 years ago. It's just uh, a very, 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 very interesting space to be in. There's a lot to learn. I mean, that's, that's one of my, personally, one of my biggest drivers of continuing to be in this space. It's not often that after having worked for about 19 years, you still get to learn so much uh, you know, in any job, honestly. Unless you take the entrepreneurial pr plunge, etc., then you're, you, then you're in a different space altogether. But in the banking space, it is not easy to be, you know, to get the opportunity to continue to learn. So that's really helped. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is that uh, we run a program in fintech uh, now because we feel that that is the future. And uh, Manish was kind enough to do a session with us uh, in the fintech program as well. Highly rated session. Uh, so thanks for that as well, Manish, for helping people understand uh, where the world is moving with respect to payments. Uh, so coming back to your career, um, who have been your mentors uh, during your career and how have you um, navigated your professional life? Because it, that also is not easy, right? Like you would, you would obviously not have been a manager always. How, how was it to start managing people and 
dealing with colleagues, bosses. Uh, that's, you know, some of these skills I never learned, even B school mein nahi hai. Yeah, so I mean, look, that, that experience started very, very early for me. And, uh, you know, to give credit to organizations such as Citibank, uh, they do that to you, right? Uh, so I, I mentioned I started off in the operations team at Citi. What I did not mention is that I started off uh, literally first day of my job, never worked before, and I was told here are you know four people who will report to you, who on an average had worked for about 10 years with Citi uh, before that, right? So I was completely, I mean, they literally threw me on the deep end and you know I had to find a way to swim. But that's what helped, that's what, because then you have no option if you want to continue to have a job, you better find a way to you know manage all of those uh, amazingly experienced folks. And just by virtue of having done an MBA, you're suddenly their boss, right? It was bizarre. But then that's where you dig deep, you find a way to you know, handle the, those expectations, handle their careers, you're suddenly responsible for their careers and their families, right? Um, so that was, that was crazy. To your point about what's helped, mentors, et cetera, I think I've been very lucky, I'll be very honest. I mean, it's been, um, I've had managers, bosses, most of them anyway, who have been mentors and bosses in equal measure. The one skill, and maybe this is, if you take nothing away from my session, maybe just remember this. The one thing that's helped me maybe the most in all of that and navigating these last you know 20 odd years is how well you network, right? And that is something that I would encourage all of us to do actively, whether you are starting off in your career or whether you're 15 years into your career, 20 years in your career. Just go crazy on networking, right? You'll get uh, rejections, you'll get, you know, nobody, people, some folks will never respond. But every time you get a chance, if you're in a, uh, you know, if you're meeting somebody, if you're meeting somebody from the corporate world, if you're meeting somebody, especially from a space that you want to be in, you have to get to know them. You, you know, make sure you make that connect. Out of 10 people, maybe two people will, will respond. But I promise you, those two people will be invaluable to your careers. So again, thanks for bringing the networking point. Uh, and I'm going to put our shameless plug here. So please join Club All Tuny because that product has been created specifically so that people can actually do this in a more organized way. Come join Club All Tuny. Every weekend, we'll ensure that we create a situation like this for you. All of you guys have all kinds of resources available to you, right? Uh, we didn't have social media, we barely had the internet uh, to, to work with at the time, right? So leverage all of these amazing sort of platforms that you have available to learn, to build networks. You know, you guys should all know what crypto does as an example uh, right now. And if you don't, then I suggest, you know, read up. And that's just an example, right? But the point I'm making is there is so much information available to you guys that we did not uh, have. So I just say, you know, one network, but also uh, read up on content uh, to kind of come up the curve. All of you uh, have been in interviews, will continue to be in interviews, and I don't think anything can beat being, you know, up to speed on content. I think that's probably a very underrated uh, skill when it comes to, you know, uh, corporate life at this point. Any uh, other mistakes that you made that you would, so one you just said that you realized networking very late in your life, but any other mistakes that you'd like to highlight which I think all of us can learn from? I think the one thing that stands out when I look back is I did not maybe enough think about or deliberately make decisions about my career, early enough at least. And I'd say maybe that is you know another thing if I, if I were to go back and change, Maybe I change that. I might end up at the same spot where I am today. That's you know that's beside the point. But I'd like to have consciously reached this point rather than you know for a large part of my career getting uh, you know just going with the flow, so to speak. So I'd say you know for all of you guys wherever you're just starting off and all of that, um, consciously think about your careers, how you want your careers to you know to progress. It's a cliched question, you know, how where you want to be five years from now, but that's just that's that'll just help you take decisions right now to get to where you want to be you know in the future one of the other things uh, that i wanted to uh, touch upon is given that you spoke about you know read a lot or crypto or whatever right 
how do you stay abreast with what's happening right now how do you upskill yourself how do you know that your job is not in jeopardy uh, that you you are absolutely relevant even today if i go into a zone where i think or start to become complacent about my job that is where the problem starts right so uh, i think it's good to be on the edge at any point of time because that's what keeps you going keeps you wanting to upskill yourself that much more because that it's almost a little bit of fear that you know you'll you'll need uh, to make sure that you're ready for your either your next role or your next job or tomorrow for that matter right you've heard of uh, elevator pitches and what not you bump into your ceo etc all those scenarios right that really happens i mean we are a company of 90 people my ceo walks across to me and has a conversation you know every second third day and you better know what he's talking about right so i think it's it, i think it's important to not get complacent to be on edge um, not on edge but constantly ha but so that is so at an emotional level and uh, this ke conscious ke ye karna hai but how do you do it there has to be also solution for this problem right yeah and that's easier said than done because all of us you know whoever is working has has extremely busy lives everyone's just you know uh there's just so much going on in everyone's personal professional lives etc that it's very hard to do but then the way at least you know i try to do that is uh and to be fair i think the pandemic really helped there is that i block time to upskill i just consciously you know you block time to have lunch take another half an hour to upskill to read make sure you know you know what content to go after because otherwise there's a there's an ocean out there right you will go you will get lost in what you're reading up also so be clear on what you want to read decide that this is the you know this is the topic i want to learn about let's you know as a, as crypto for example if you give one week to crypto half an hour every day just read up on crypto it, it's not that hard to do if you're able to just block time and do it it just takes uh you know conscious effort there is no pay off immediately but i promise you you will what you read up today you will talk about one week one month one year or five years down the line and it will it will be tremendously useful as you go further into your careers to find that half an hour will become harder uh, that i guarantee you one last trick question uh, how important is money for you and how 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 important has money been at various stages extremely important and it continues to be extremely important it will forever be you know important i think i'd love to say are what money and uh, it's a role dekho and do sab dekho i i mean for me it's very clear i need to sustain um, lifestyles uh, i need to make sure at some point i don't know uh, maybe 13 12 13 years down the line uh, that i can achieve financial freedom i can continue to work if i want to but i don't have to um so you know get out your excel sheets plan your cash flows for the next 30 odd years that all of you are going to be working for and guys again we talked we talked about mistakes that was one massive mistake i made i did not manage money well so all of you if you don't have it already have your excel sheets plan your finances plan your investments do not let money lying around in your savings account either spend it or invest it right um do it right now like go home and do it today because um i did that much later i did that now uh and now i at least have a goal that i'm working towards but that ent- that goal entirely depends on making sure i make enough money because all of us have lifestyles uh, we are privileged let's be honest to have lifestyles that um need money to continue to come in uh the the only thing i would ask is you know how much you you need at the end of your career and plan backwards so you know what you're doing uh i'm going to open up the floor for questions uh for the audience in my humble opinion uh, uh, you you talked about being risk averse early in your life and uh, to my mind it sounds o- almost like an oxymoron a successful risk averse banker So could you comment on that and so are you only risk averse in personal life or is, in a career you're different any good banker has to be a superb risk manager <laughs> for sure i don't know about risk averse but definitely risk is top of yeah. the line yeah so and i think you answered that question yourself so i think when it comes to work etc you obviously have to be very you know you have to manage risk every day as in a bank right so you're right about that 
but in terms of my personal sort of journey and my career etc that is where i am i'm risk averse i cannot afford as you correctly said i cannot not afford to have a risk mentality when it comes to my actual day to day work but when it comes to my working life and how i you know see myself uh, progressing for the rest of it as well um i'm you know one of the things that's happening is this this whole fintech thing is going crazy right there's you know uh, there's so much uh, let's be honest we see money to be had now uh, that there are you know that temptation of taking that entrepreneurial plunge is very very strong and it it is there every day but i'm very clear that i don't want to do it um so to your point risk covers when it comes to my own career but i necessarily have to manage risk on a day to day basis in at my workplace uh, manish one question you know inspired from this question around risk coverness um, you i remember you had also gone to netherlands for some time i think as one of your roles right i did and that to your previous question was purely to make money uh, <laughs> that was an on site posting and at that time on site posting was all about making money so we were all four of us got together in a in a tiny bachelor pad lived there uh, pocketed the per diem that we used to get uh, you know for for on site expenses and made a ton of money to be so honest so you you were in netherlands for some time and um, so i'm sure that lifestyle would have been absolutely perfect for you right uh, why did you come back it was fantastic to be honest uh, but it was also a, a a good realization of what i actually want to do uh, or actually not what i want to do i i knew what i wanted to do or where i want to be um i uh, it was fantastic to be there for a while i was there for sort of 3 months or uh, twice uh, it was great while it lasted but I, it was also fantastic because i realized that i cannot stay beyond a point outside of uh, base location and that's Why, uh, why, why, so what what happened that made you to come to that conclusion i uh, know it's just personal choice it there was nothing there was it was just something i wanted to do i i decided but, but wahan pe friday ko 2 baje ke baad to kaam bhi nahi karna padta hai ha ha not just that even you know even on a normal working day you wrap up at 5 o'clock and you go home quality of life fantastic everything was was you know absolutely brilliant um it was just and it continues to be a personal choice for me to continue to be in bombay this has always been home you called me a mumbai car i prefer being called a bombayite um this has always been home and that's the only reason there was no logical money reason there was no logical it is attached to the city yeah that's all it is it was just a choice i made so you said visa wants to be um everywhere there is movement of money yeah. and uh, so is that because now earlier on there was a charge on transaction of money but now you see increasingly that there is almost zero or negligence charge on money on being moved so when Z visa is aiming at that uh, so is that on a i mean what's the business model here is it that that, that they're going to have a charge or is it like on a float basis that they want to keep the money so great question firstly uh, it's a conscious decision that the company has taken um not f- i mean partly for the reasons that you mentioned but also just for the opportunity right uh, traditionally cards has been um, a card transaction has been all of us going into a, a mall and buying goods and paying for it that has always been what cards has done visa has consciously taken a decision to now be sort of break through that and be everywhere where there is money movement what does that mean in in addition to just you and me paying a shop it also means corporate payments b to b uh, as we call it it also means um, b to c right disbursements from companies to individuals salaries as an example government payments businesses paying governments they are tax and so on and so forth that opportunity was too large uh, to ignore as a company right and so we consciously set out to be uh, to grow beyond that traditional that will always be our core that continues to be our core but we have now set out to expand beyond the core to be everywhere where there is money movement and frankly i was re- part of why i was recruited into visa was that i come from a corporate banking and a transaction banking background why would a you know a, a retail card company want to hire me so that's sort of how i got in as well thank you so much uh, manish once again a big round of applause for manish guys thank you you must be thinking another pre roll wait let me just skip it With all theory, there are some boring things which you can avoid, like the long wait for promotions or increments, or the numerous interviews before you land your dream job. 
at all you need we make sure that you're future ready and skilled to be in the top 0.5% class click on the link in the description now Thank you.